Okay, good afternoon and uh, welcome to this uh, Picha Kucha competition. This is an important event because it's the first event of its kind in Morocco. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Take this in mind. Um, there are certain rules that you have to respect. Of course, the space there, you should move just within that limited space. We are not going to use any microphone. So rely on your own voice projection. This is a kind of training for you to use your voice the maximum possible. It will be counted on the uh, criteria of, of scoring. There is a, a committee for scoring the different presentations. And there will be winners, of course. First prize, second prize, third prize. There will be prizes. And there will be surprises. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, try to do your best uh, to compete uh, strongly to get this, this, this prize or these three prizes. Uh, everything is going to be recorded, so please keep silent. Don't, don't clap. If you want to laugh, laugh discreetly. <laughs> there is something to laugh about. Um, We'll try to do a very good recording so that it can stay as a model for others to follow. Uh, we want to share this experience with all people around the world and all people around Morocco. And if they want to do it again, they can take this as a model to follow. And I'm sure that you are going to do well, but please keep silent. I'm still seeing people talking. Please keep silent. Uh, so I wish you uh, good luck. When you come here, First thing to do is present yourself. And if you work, if you have prepared the picture kucha with your partner, present the partner too. So this picture kucha is presented by X and Z. <laughs> okay, I wish you good luck and uh, I'm sure it will be an excellent uh, event. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. You are the most welcome to picture kucha afternoon. Uh, so our presentation of today, Picha Kucha presentation, is going to be about, so let's begin with the definition of a web to tool, which is Voxopop. So Voxopop is a web-based audio tool that enables users to record their speakings for others to listen and respond. So once you click on the website of www.voxopop.com, you get the homepage of Voxopop. So you can listen to old or newest information talk groups. So, all the newest uh, top groups, for example, 2014 World Cup in Brazil, or all uh, top groups that are created before you link in in Voxopop. So, here is an example of a top group, for example, above the screen, the, the theme of uh, the top group, which is 2014 World Cup in Brazil, and in the right of the screen, the number of the members that are involved in the, in the groups, and also the date of creation. So under the screens, there is a subtitle, which is Panama Soccer Team, which is an example of a talk group. So once you click it on, on it, you click on the small button there, so as to listen to, to the record. And if you like the record, you can share it with your friends, with Facebook, and Gmails, and so on. And here also, there is other options, for example, to, to repeat uh, your, your records, and so on. So to add a discussion, you will need to register using a valid address email. And this is the most important thing in Voxopop. So we have to have a valid address email so as to be a member, so as to share your information, your record on uh, Voxopop. So you have first to click on sign up or join in. Once you click on sign up, you get this form. You have to fill it with, with most appropriate information. For example, in the, above, the required details, your username, the, the password, you confirm the passwords. On the right of the screen, the optional details, the city, uh, and, all, and text, com command text. So once you fill it, you click on I agree or sign me up. This page will load you in your browser. In the right of the screen, again, the, the professional picture of your profile, and also a number of choices that are given by Voxopop. For example, you are now signed up and logged in, test that recording works in your system, record a personal introduction. So to start adding messages to other people's talk groups, you need to click on join them, though you can listen to most messages without joining. So you have the right to, to listen to all to others uh, recording by clicking on play all. 
and you can listen to one of them and you can also record your information. You can record your message, it's easy to record your message, you need just to click on the red button there and also there are other buttons so as to control your recording, for example, to stop it and to play it whenever you want, uh, for example, to stop it whenever there is a distraction in the room and so on. So it's easy, as I said before, to record a message. So once you can, once you have joined the talk group, you can subscribe to it so that you are updated with new entries. So if you want to know more information about the talk groups, you can subscribe to it so as to, to be updated by new information that are given by other people uh, in, in the same talk groups. So to create your talk group, now you want to be a professional box of popper, as I said. So click on log in, then click on start a talk group there in the, in the right circle, with the red circle. So as to, to, to begin, uh, explore the, the box of pop and uh, record your information. So this page shows the talk group details. So you have to fill it again. So uh, you have to begin with the talk group name, for example, in ATFL and ICT, and the type of group the category, educational purposes, technology, and so on, and then access level, whether you want it to be open or private, and so on, and, and so on. So click on record new discussion to add yours. Now you want to be uh, a professional, as I said. You want to record your information so as to allow your students, for example, to listen to it. You need just to click on record, the right button there, so as to allow others to listen to your record, and so on. And there are other options, uh, as I said. So, as you click on record a new discussion, you will get this page. If you are an existing user, you need just to, to, to write your username and password. But if you are a new user there, you have to sign up now. Uh, what you need to sign up uh, is to, to, fill, uh, to fill up. You need to fill, you fill the boxes to sign up. But if you are already signed up, just log in. You have to fill again other information, for example, the username, the password, you confirm the password, the email address, and so on. Other optional details, for example, to write or comment there, I'm glad to take part uh, in, in this discussion, and so on. So it's ready to record now for everyone. Just you need to click on the right, on the red button again, and you have the right to, to start a talk group discussion there, to say anything you want, and so on, and you have also to cite the city or the zone in which you, uh, where you are uh, recording your message. So, when you want to invite someone to your talk group, fill these boxes. You have to begin with your rename, to enter your rename, the email, and a short personal message to those who want to, to invite. For example, please join my talk groups and record your opinion. And you have to enter the number of emails of those who want to invite. Now we come up to another important point, which is the implementation of Voxel Pop in education. So, first we use it in interaction point. A teacher can have a kind of interaction uh, with his students. So, for example, to, to, to record a text for his students and allow the, the, their students to listen to it and respond. And also we use it to improve our students' pronunciation. Whenever we come across difficult words, difficult uh, phrases, we record it for our students to ask to, to repeat it again and again in order to improve their pronunciation. This is on one hand. On the other hand, we use it in comprehension check. So you can record a story or something else and some questions related to it and ask the students to answer those questions. You can record anything you want, a text, questions, and you, you ask students to, to, to answer it. Uh, so these are the, the, the three main uh, things that, uh, so thank you so much for your attention, and that's it, thank you. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, welcome all. Okay, today's presentation or today's picture picture is Attitudes Towards Using Technology in the Classroom, presented by I, Ahlam Hilmi and Ibrahim Mizgar. Okay, first I'm going just to introduce the uh, table of content so as to make you capture the things that I'm going to, to tackle later. So, um, I'll be dealing with first, meaning of educational technology, second, implementing ICT in the classroom, third, reaps and costs of using technology in the classroom, four, teachers' attitudes towards using computer technology inside the classroom, five, students' responses towards ICT, and finally, 
a, um, a end up with a conclusion. Okay, educational technology actually means the analysis, facilitation, and enhancement of using, producing, and organizing uh, technological or appropriate technological methods for a better uh, understanding and uh, integration of academics. Uh, here are some technical terms related to uh, technology. Okay, we, we have got technophobe, uh, which refers to people who might be afraid of the use of technology. Digital native are people who grew up with technology and are familiar with. And finally, digital immigrants are the people who just come late to the, to the, the world of technology. Okay, implementing ICT inside the classroom. Actually, uh, implementing or incorporating ICT inside the classroom uh, ensures uh, a better uh, presentation of the lesson as well as enhances the, uh, uh, the involvement of students in a way that is truly good and uh, effective. Some implementations of ICT inside the classroom using websites uh, that allow for clear contact information, uh, internet-based project work, teachers can use internet, can use it to uh, incorporate internet in the, uh, uh, in, in, uh, the language class, Okay, and email people projects uh, through which learners can expand their connection and interaction. Class blog is actually a, 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 a creative way that enables, le that enables learners to interact, to substantiate new understandings, to get ideas, and more to make connections uh, with other people or, or with other students from different places and different uh, countries. Okay, reads and costs of using technology inside the classroom. Actually, integrating technology inside the classroom provides you with the opportunity to enhance students' learning through the use of research, problem solving, and discovery. And students become active and motivated towards exploring information while the, teach while the teacher becomes facilitator. Although technology in the classroom have many, uh, does have many benefits like a proper staff training, um, limited access to adequate quantities of technology and the extra time required are just few of the limitations using techn technology inside our classrooms. Some beliefs, uh, uh, I mean by teachers to word using computer, they said that they are for because they believe that excessive technology increases the opportunity for successful teaching experience and also access to technology contributes to the greater confidence in teachers' instructional uh, career. Technology also motivates students and offers different mode of presentation. It also enhances students' learning and keeps them all the time well focused. It is, after all, an efficient means of getting information that must be used in all subject matters. Okay, uh, teachers also ha have attitudes, I mean, have t attitudes against using technology inside the classroom because they believe that it's uh, caused by the lack of confidence. Okay, teachers, they are not familiar with the materials and they will believe that they are not good at. The lack also of facilities and they claim the responsibility, for example, of administration, etc. Lack of training also, they say or they claim administrators do not provide individualized and differentiated process of training uh, and implementation. Also using computer technology in the classroom inhibits teachers to organize the lesson effectively and concisely. Okay, some negative comments from teachers. Example, using computer isn't it interactive. My students can do computer work at home. Uh, I don't like them, so why I should use them in the classroom? They say also, they argue also that why use computer anyway? I mean, we've got a respectful, good uh, course book. They also say, I'd like to use computers more, but preparing materials is so time uh, consuming. I don't know. I don't know how to use it in my class, hence it's, it's consuming, as I mentioned before. Uh, I can never get into a computer room in class time. It's always being used. And also they claim that my students know much better, more about computer technology than I do. Now we come to students' response towards using technology in the classroom. Some students are the majority, or some students indicate that technology integration in the, in the classroom makes learning more interesting and enjoyable. And also, 
has the pot technology has the potential to reach students of all learning styles as well as be more efficient. Technology also helps students understand better because it provides a good visualization in a variety of formats and indicators better prepare students for the future when using technology aimed at addressing each specific learning style. And finally, using computer technology inside the classroom can increasingly give practice and give practice to our language skills and abilities that we learn inside the classroom. And now I end up with a conclusion. Okay, uh, briefly, I think that because we are living in a world of technology and technology has changed the way we teach and the way we learn. So our role is to maximize the benefits and the reaps of technology and as well as to minimize the uh, costs of it in a way that suits our goals and objectives. And thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank you, you the attendees, for your attention, collaboration, and attendance. Our Picha Picha's presentation for today is entitled Evernote, and it is prepared by Asma Askawi and I, Ahmed Hafidi. Okay? So, here we go. In the spirit of this presentation, which is entitled Evernote, I'm going to cast light on four important points. Namely, what, what do we mean by Evernote? Get started with Evernote. Benefits of using Evernote in education, both on the parts of teachers and also on the parts of students. And finally, ways of using Evernote in education. Okay? So what do I mean by Evernote? By Evernote we mean a suite of software and services designed for note-taking and archiving. Here a note can be a piece of formatted text, a photograph, a voice memo, or a handwritten ink note. It can also be a full web page. Therefore, in order to get started with Evernote in a successful and effective way, the only thing which we need to do is to take into consideration or to take into account the following steps. In this context, we can say that the first step which we need to take into account is to go to, go to the following website, www.evernote.com. Then the following web page, as you see here in the slide, will appear. After that, you need to click on Create an account. As you see here, then what you should do is to fill out this form. And finally, click on Register. The next step which you need to follow is to install Evernote application on your computer. First, you need to click on Download Now, then the following window will appear. As you see here in the slide, at this stage, what we need to do is to click on Save File. And here is Evernote in the interface, as you see here in the slide or in the picture, and it looks somehow like Microsoft Office Word. And in the main toolbar, we find the files, uh, uh, clips, yes, and notes, and many toolbars. Okay. And in order to create to create a notebook in a, in a Evernote, there exist four main steps. The first step to start with is to click on New Note and then create new page will appear. At this stage, what we need to do, yes, and then in order to add notes and photos, what we need to do is to drag photos or files from your desktop and finally put them, the notes, as you see here. As I tried, I tried to drag Jennifer's and Ryan's photos from my desktop and put them in the and in order to create ink, audio, and video notes, what we need to do is to click on the new, uh, on the new note button which exists in the main toolbar. Then you will be given the following options. New note, new ink note, new audio note, and so on. When it comes to web clip, which is also another application within Evernote, we can say that it really constitutes a very useful tool via which we can save our uh, favorite web pages, including text, images, and links. As you see here, we have the web clipper button and so on. 
finally, we can see that you can share your notes with your friends, whether they have Evernote installed or not. What we need to do is to click on the share button, then you will be given the following options. Send by email, post to Facebook, post to Twitter, and so on. When it comes to benefits of using Evernote in education, we can say that this web tool, which is Evernote, plays a determining and significant role in facilitating things, not only for teachers, but also for students. Students here in all different educational levels and backgrounds can use Evernote to organize their educational priorities. Here, Evernote can help students keep track of anything or everything that is school-related. In this context, we can say that it is as is for students to capture all their important documents and projects and then put them and organize them in Evernote, either by projects or by classes. When it comes to teachers, we can say that Evernote can make the duties of teaching much more easier, organized, and accessible by either uh, put these uh, pictures with, uh, which they capture from a whiteboard, for example, and uh, organize them then in Evernote. Now we come to ways of using Evernote in education. In this context, I'm going to talk more specifically about, about ways of using Evernote by educators prior to class, during class, and after class. Prior to class, we have professional development and prepare for your absence. Concerning professional development, we can say that if you use, for example, vacations in order to improve your skills or your education, you can keep all your notes in Evernote. Okay. And during class, we have shared a notebook with your class, and then we have whiteboard photos, which means you, as a teacher, can capture the pictures of lessons in a whiteboard, organize, save them in a Evernote, and then you can ask them at any time you want. And, this, and, uh, and then we have get handouts handy which means keep all of the handouts, assignments, everything that you do as a teacher in a frequent way uh, in Evernote, where they are easily and uh, where they are easily accessible and searchable. Okay? Now we come to after class, where we have simplified grading, which means that the process of grading becomes much more simpler and then keep your extracurriculars in order, which means that if you participate, for example, in a committee, you can use Evernote in order to keep track of all the important information that is associated with Evernote. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, my presentation is going to be about use of block in education. Unfortunately, my colleague uh, Yasina Eithamo is not here, so we we'll wish his mother good um, uh, recovery. Then what is a block? Where is a block can be used? How can a block help students, teachers? Why can a block be used in education, educational benefits of blocks? These are the outlines that we are going to go through. So what is a block first? We have to go through. Then the block is a communicative and cooperative space. It's something very, very important that we have to know and to go through. Uh, and it is used whenever there is a curriculum. It's something sounding very interesting, curriculum. So it's attractive. So where should this be used? It should be used with students and uh, <coughs> teachers inside and outside classroom inside classroom it's okay but outside classroom is strange wake up how can a blog help students and teachers to share ideas learn from the best find classroom educators to collaborate with and participate in challenges that's something really interesting because in a blog, we have to share ideas between each other, and we can go through this like word club. Human, state, rights, establish, freedom. It's a very good opportunity to motivate students and go 
uh, to the best and not let them panic. And then we have, <laughs> yeah, we have video there. <laughs> we have a video, we can use a video news and drama to in waiting for the video. So we have here, so in the blog, we can use videos, live videos, so to keep our friends and then they like technology, so video is here. And if I'm dealing with human rights, so I have something for them. So we move, so we have, it's a nice video. Then we have to ask them to go through something very interesting nowadays. Our students are not really paying attention to news. So why not? I'm going to take news from uh, somewhere and then put uh, CNN, for example, and give, uh, and give uh, what's going on. Drama here. I have drama. So my students like drama. So I will take a script. Let them like drama, for example. Oh, Hamlet, it's really interesting. And then we play, and the floor is theirs, and then we go and we move. We have PowerPoints. I can ask them to go through the definition of power of human rights, for example. Then they are going to search for human rights are the rights that all people have by virtue of begin. Yeah, very interesting. And I'm going to ask all my students to go through human rights and then gather all these on my blog. So then I'm going to give them a quiz and they are going to answer a quiz in the blog. And it's something really interesting. They are going to answer also writing. They are going to go through writing on the blog and graphic organizers, writing conventions, critiquing, and grading the writing process. We go through, and then we have something interesting is that vocabulary. You know, our students today are really lazy to search words, so we can look for crossword and then let them check vocabulary. Yes, this, I have found this, and this, and this, and we gather a list. Then we get to let, uh, uh, sorry, a winner. We have also listening. We can help them listen, listen to us, listen to themselves. And then here we have a story. They are going to read stories now. Each one is going to read the story. Oh, creature, wolf. Yeah. I'm going to give this student's story and he is going to read it. After 15 days, another student will read and then it's competition between students. It's something very interesting. Then we have teaching speaking. Very nice idea. So blogs are really good. So do you have any plans for the weekend, Ines? Uh-oh. Sorry. I'm thinking of visiting my friend. And then it becomes something um, uh, social. Then we have teaching reading. Newspapers, stories, text, poetry, quotes, articles. On the writing scripts is something really interesting. They are going, we, I'm going to gather my students. They are going to be mine. So each one is going to work on Picha Kucha and put things on the block. Something very interesting. And like today, we are going to compete and we'll look for the winner. Why not? Thanks. Thank you so much. Mr. Hamati, Ms. Ray Stubb, and I, Ibrahim Naomari, 
I'm going to give a presentation about special spaces you have never seen. These learners are endowed with magic skills, capacities, and extraordinary. They are the 21st century learners who born in the digital age. In this age, the way we live, show, work and play is influenced by the advancement of technology. In other words, the tools for information management. In today's world, there are changes in the workplace, advances in digital technologies, global connections, and changes in our understanding of learning. And this is a good example of a digital native. The world in which these learners find themselves today is fundamentally different than before. Today's digital generation have access to new technology tools at an early age. However, the present question is how will you, as a teacher, engage the digital learners in the content and process of learning? It's by helping those learners by being collaborating, creating, critical thinking, and collaborating. The 21st century is need to develop, students need to develop some basic skills to meet the demands of the digital age. The first skill is creativity and innovation. This means that these learners should use their knowledge and understanding to create new ways of thinking. So, effective learners <coughs> are not only able to solve problems, but they are also able to create something new. They have the ability to create new products and services. This means they are productive learners, not just knowledge consumers. The second skill is criti critical thinking and problem solving. Effective learners are critical thinkers and evaluators. They can analyze the problem and make decisions about the most effective ways to solve the problem. This new way of thinking is summarized in the Blossom Revised Taxonomy. The idea is to encourage students apply higher order of thinking to new problems and issues, moving from the lower to the top. The third skill is communication. Students need to communicate effectively. How? In a wide variety of forms. Why? For different purposes. And by which means? Via multiple media te and technologies. So, effective communicators and creators are able to communicate across culture, time and distance. Technology allows us to work with each other regardless of time, culture, uh, or place. Today's learners should be able to communicate with people from different cultures at different times and different places. The fourth skill is collaboration. It refers to the need. It refers to the need for working with others respectively and effectively to create, use, and share knowledge, solutions, and innovations. Therefore, effective global collaborators are able to collaborate as to reach common goals. This means that the 21st century learners need to develop communication, communicative and co cooperative skills that will enable them to collaborate with others in order to reach common goals. In addition, Effective global collaborators have no boundaries. They can collaborate with different people from different parts of the world just via using different technological tools. Fifth, information, media, and technology skills are among the skills that students need to develop. Let's start with information that we see. 21st century learners should access information effectively and efficiently. They should evaluate information critically and competently. And they should also use information accurately and creatively. Another skill related to this is media <coughs> literacy. That is to say, 
students need to understand how media messages are constructed, for what purposes, and by which tools, characteristics, and conventions. The following is, the following scale is uh, ICT literacy skills, meaning that students need to be able to use digital technology, <coughs> communication tools, and networks appropriately and ethically. They also need to be able to research, organize, evaluate, and communicate information. The six major skills that students need today are career and life skills. Today's learners are, expe are expected to be more responsible and independent learners and workers. In addition to this, they need to develop leadership skills. The last skill that the 21st century learners need to develop is cultural awareness. This can be achieved through recognizing and respecting cultural differences. And also this can be realized via working with others from a wide range of cultural and social backgrounds. And here comes the summary of the skills that the 20 first century learners need to possess in order to cope with the, the dramatic changes that the world constantly undergoes. Thank you very much. Okay, good evening everybody. Before I get started, I would like to thank or to express my honest uh, my honest greeting for all people who are presented here today with us, as well as I would like to thank our professors for uh, their momentous effort that they have made for us. And then you are very welcome to our Picha Kucha presentation, which is presented or done by uh, Miriam Aitamu and I Ikram Aitadra. So it, it is entitled by it is entitled by blogs, wikis, and podcasts. So we all know that Web2 tools, they, are, or they have been playing a really significant role in the field of education for many years, and uh, they have become a new pedagogical alternative for language teaching as well as language learning. That is why we have focused on three main Web2 tools, namely blogs, wikis, and podcasts. So let us, look, let us have a look. Um, into blogging, which has become increasingly one of the popular uh, language learning tools. So we will discover what is uh, a blog. Actually, a blog is a, is a frequently it is frequently a updated website that is often resembled as an online journal, which is easy actually to be created and uh, you just need uh, basic access to internet as well as some basic techniques. So blogs in language teaching might include blogs written by or for teachers covering a wide range of topics related to education, purposes of class instruction, and a development to learn on composition. So here the teacher can provide his students with assignments, homework, and uh, other forms of content such as videos and pictures. Each blog, which is uh, the acronym of education blog, actually here the teacher can assign some news and some news or an announcement for his student, some homework and practice, as well as to provide extra reading practice for student or online uh, with, uh, with uh, site webs. So uh, types of blog used in language teaching, we have three main types. The first one, torture blog, which is maintained by the teacher, in which he assigned all the homeworks, assignments, syllabus, and course information. Student blogs, which is the individual or the personal uh, space for the student, and class blog, which is uh, shared by student and teachers. Some advantages of using blogs, for example, it provides a real audience for students writing, as well as it is a useful resource for both teachers and students to get information and to create a community, an online community around a common uh, interest, topic of interest. Uh, each blog can be used uh, also for assessment and evaluation by using some traditional cr criteria as uh, accuracy, fluency, relevance, and cohesion. Uh, it, is a, it is used as an online portfolio of student written uh, work. So how to start using blogs with learners? 
the first step or step number one, sit in, uh, sit in up a sample block for your student. Then step number two, sit in up a student block. So the teacher, he should encourage his students to create their own blog. Step number three, post in to and visit and blog. And finally, step number four, the follow up. So uh, now we move to the second part, which is about wikis. Wiki is a website created by a group rather than by an individual. It also seeks to in involve the users or the learner in, uh, in a collaborative or and a creative way. So characteristic of wikis, a wiki invites all users uh, to edit. It can be edited by multiple users. And here, uh, the well-known example, which is Wikipedia, which is continuously written and rewritten by uh, a lot of users. Wiki promotes also meaningful topics, links to other pages online on the web. So when mentioning wiki, we cannot ignore mentioning also collaborative learning, engagement, communication, information sharing, group project, content development, and, and participation, in which we consider the learner as an active participant in the, in the world of uh, the web. So the third part, which is concerned about podcasts. So what is a podcast? Is actually is a like a radio or a TV show, but the difference here is that you can listen to or watch whenever and wherever you want to the topic that they are interested in you. And it, it can be produced in an MP3 file or an audio file. Um, how can we use podcasts in teaching? First of all, we can use it for distribution of lecture or a delivery of supplemental educational materials and content or for assignment. As well as we can use it in uh, assessing students' speaking skills uh, in terms of uh, pronunciation and so on. So here are some examples of podcasts that a student can use. For example, for uh, describing pictures, oral diaries, group presentation on a complete project, storytelling, oral weekly report, as well as uh, they can use it to express their thoughts and their ideas. So advantages of podcasts, it is a useful for revision in the sense that it helps students to make sense of their uh, note as well as it helps them to get uh, what they haven't understood in the lesson, as well as it gives them the opportunity to create study aids for their classmates and to, uh, to, to, to work or to, to express their point of view. Uh, how to create a project podcast? Step number one, so the teacher has to access to that website www podomatic.com by setting up a podcast page for his student or her student to give them a website in which they post their, um, uh, their podcast. Number two, the student create their own uh, podcasting. Number three, listening to learner podcast. He, the learner, listen to the podcast as, and, uh, as to compare it to other students. Number six, number four, students start making their own podcast. Uh, according to what they have done in the classroom and the lessons that they have covered. So podcasting does not contain any inherent value. It is only valuable in as much as help it helps uh, the instructor as students reach their educational goal by facilitating thoughtful engagement learning activity that are designed to work in a super, uh, supportive of those goals. And that's it. Thank you so much. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome, uh, everyone, to our uh, Picha uh, competition. Here, I, here we are. Um, I'm presenting on behalf of my uh, colleague, uh, Mohamed Akhraz. My name is Khadija Gouli, and I'm presenting a Picha Kucha on um, a week two tool, uh, which is named Dropbox. Here is our outline. First, we are going to, uh, to define what is Dropbox, then uh, some benefits of Dropbox, and how to download and install Dropbox, then some tips for effective use of Dropbox and uh, Dropbox for students. First, what is Dropbox? Dropbox is a, uh, is a software that you install your, on your computer and that, uh, that allows you to, to, have, uh, to link all of your computers via a single folder which is, uh, and it is an easy way to access all of your files um, uh, using just one single computer. Uh, some benefits of Dropbox. Your files anywhere and anytime, some uh, uh, easy sharing, 
simple sharing and your stuff is safe, then Dropbox uh, mobile. Okay, uh, with Dropbox, users can access uh, can access their files anywhere without having to carry out with the, uh, with them their laptops, and um, they can have the they can uh, they can just log in from any computer uh, from the website Dropbox website and access their files. Uh, uh, okay, and users can share using uh, Dropbox any type of files. They can share documents, uh, uh, videos, and also pictures, and they can also create groups uh, sharing uh, between them uh, files and folders. Okay, uh, Dropbox allows also uh, a Dropbox mobile, which you, uh, uh, you have any, uh, using Dropbox mobile, any, any file that you, inst that you store in your, on your computer, it immediately, it instantly, um, uh, say it is instantly saved to your, uh, to your Dropbox mobiles and computers. To get started, go to www.dropbox.com and um, here is the, the web page. Uh, then you click on download Dropbox on the, on the web page and follow the instructions to install and to download first, then install the Dropbox. Here, then create your Dropbox account, fill it in with your first name, last name, your email, and also your password. And you can give uh, your, uh, your computer a name and then click continue. Then you will have some options that we, the, in which you, uh, you choose a free account which allows you uh, with a two gigabyte uh, free storage uh, of, your com of, your, um, of your files. Um, then you, you click next. <coughs> After, uh, after once you you install you download first then you install the, the Dropbox on your on your computer uh, an icon is created on your in your desktop and also on the on the system tray for uh, an easy access to your folder and uh, to your to your files uh, uh, that you have on, uh, saved on your folder how to store in Dropbox the easiest way to, to store in Dropbox is just by dragging the by, uh, by dragging the file, selecting first, and dragging the file from your, your from a folder on your desktop to um, to a folder of uh, to your Dropbox folder. While uploading, notice the um, notice the uploading icon. Uh, here is um, when it is in in blue color. They used to say. Um, they used to say it is syncing to your Dropbox to your Dropbox website, and once it turns green, that is, uh, this means that uh, it the the uploading has finished. Then, after doing this, you can go back to Dropbox homepage and log in, clicking on log in and filling in with your email and your um your password. Then you click on log in, and and you will have access to your to your account uh, of Dropbox. Then the Dropbox homepage is displayed, which gives you an, uh, which gives you a menu icons. Uh, you can start uploading, new, uh, creating new folders, and sharing a folder. And also, it gives you the opportunity to have to show the deleted, the deleted uh, files that you have deleted. You can share any folder you want using uh, using Dropbox just by clicking on from the the Dropbox account. You click on on share, then click on share folder and select that folder you want or that file you you want to to share with you with any with as many people as you wish. And uh, after after this, a box is shown. Then uh, on that on that box, you enter the email addresses of collaborators and a personal message if, if desired, if you want to, to, to message them. And um, you click on share, then immediately those, those folders that you shared with them goes immediately sent uh, to, uh, to their emails. Share uh, any Dropbox that you install on your computer uh, gives you the opportunity with a public folder. A public folder is any folder that, that gives you the opportunity to share an individual file and gives you a link that, um, that you can share with others. Dropbox for students. Students uh, can, um, 
Okay, Dropbox is an efficient alternative to emailing files to yourself. Some students just email files uh, in case they don't have uh, such an account. Students may use uh, Dropbox to share files among them, and they can also share uh, different uh, okay, f f folders. Okay, uh, okay. I wish, uh, I hope you have uh, learned something about Dropbox, and uh, this is uh, this is really an amazing and interesting. Um, website that you should know about and thank you. Interesting tools are visiting us this, this afternoon. Mine is one of them. Okay, my name is Nadia Bhatt and I'm presenting on the behalf of uh, Mr. Ahmed Dakhisi who is not here. So I'm so happy to, to give you a presentation, a good picture, a picture presentation on a new tool. So let's uh, discover this one. So do you have journals? Do you have diaries? Have you even ever found your sister or your brother reading your diary secretly? What do you do? Write them on your computer? What if a virus comes and take all that? It's, it's pretty hard. So uh, that's why I look on the internet and I find an interesting tool called Pinzo. Pinzo is a free online tool. It's a personal journal. You can write your diaries, you can write whatever you want and it's safe, it locks, there is, there is no problem with it. So what you need just to click on, uh, you can go to the, the website and write down uh, pinzo.com and then this one appears. You can have new entry, you can save it, print it and bring it to class. You can uh, insert photos, share uh, different ideas, you can block them and uh, tag and comment on them. So all that you can do it with Pinzo. So here is the, the second page. You, it, it requires a minimum information, just your email address. You can write your email address and password, and then you click on the submit. And then you can start to read your journals, your diaries, you can, read, uh, you can write whatever you, you want. So here, here you, you can start writing your text title, and it's dated automatically. You don't know to worry about what is the, the day to day. Okay, so here we go, and you can change the, the title, you can have uh, different colors, different, uh, you can put it in bold, and etc. And also, you can have so many journals. How can, uh, what can you do? You just go to this tab and click on it, and you will have all your diaries, your journals, as a teacher and as a student. So it's, what you need is just to have an email address. And then after that, uh, you can also uh, use it as a, uh, to write stories, short stories. You can design short stories. You can give pictures to your students. You can bring this at, in the classroom. You can give, give it to your students, and they can discover and write short stories. You can, they can describe what is in the picture, and then they can use their imagination. So all that in things. Though. And then you can use it to your personal notes as well as for you uh, as a teacher and as students. You can write what, what I'm going to do today, this, 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 and this. You can take a lecture notes from this by using Pinzo, so you can bring it in the classroom if the internet and the, the laptop is, a, is allowed. And then you can give, uh, you can use it for, with your students. You can ask them to create their, their free uh, Pinzo, and then they send you, for example, um, a writing, and then you give them a feedback. From this, uh, from this one, they send it to you via email. You can receive a uh, text and, and a link to to this uh, window. You can use it as your diary, as you say. As I said, it's it's safe. No one can go th through it. You can lock it and give it uh, a password, so no one can. Even if they go to this page, they won't they won't enter enter to it until they are uh, given the password. So it's very easy. And then you can use it as with your, uh, your stud uh, students. You can give them a chapter to read and read and uh, submit an, uh, a summary to you. So it's very easy. They can read, uh, for example, a chapter and uh, send you uh, a summary via email or via uh, this uh, Pinzo page. So it's uh, very simple. As well as you can use it for uh, creating exercises. You could grammar exercise, writing what, whatever exercise you, like, you wish to, to give to your students. So, and after that, you can, uh, you can, uh, they can answer the exercise and send, send it back to you again. 
So uh, after that, you can uh, also use it to give feedback and inline command to your to your students, so they can send you a first draft, for example, of the of the article, and then you can highlight and use different colors to to show where is the the the, the key elements and the, what's what uh, what are the mistakes, for example. You can use it to write a real email, as as Mr. Hassim said in the morning. You can send letters, send emails, send send the different. Uh, uh, letters and then the teacher can uh, correct them and uh, uh, you can he can or she can uh, assist you of course it's used uh, to collaborative work with your students you can assign you can uh, assign them to for example uh, to write to, uh, to write about a particular topic and then uh, together they can uh, come up with uh, with an article with uh, for example uh, everything so and then after that you can grade your students you can grade them privately so you can send them their grades and uh, in, in in different uh, forms so they can uh, have their grades back in, in their in their Pinzo uh, account so different uh, ways to use this uh, free account and of course to have a touch with your students' parents, especially with private sectors, they their parents are always coming and complain and ask about the about their their uh, their uh, uh, children. So you can have a weekly or monthly, for example, letters to send your to your to your uh, students' parents to have a feedback about their students or and their progress. As well as you can use it for pictures for entertainment. For example, I can insert my pictures here, so I can click on that and uh, uh, insert my, my desired pictures. After that, if I want it to be in an uh, uh, entire page, I can also click on like this and have it in my uh, entire page and have a collection of my uh, pictures. So it's very amazing, it's very useful and easy to use. So there is no, uh, no uh, uh, fear for others to, to go through my journal and read it and so on. So thank you very much. This is my uh, picture picture presentation. I hope uh, you enjoy it. So thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Okay, how are you today? Fine. Okay. Uh, my presentation, uh, my picture picture presentation, is entitled with "Waking the Poet Within Your Students." Okay, it's about using poetry in AFL classroom. Uh, it's uh, done by Mir Makafe and Sumia Budag. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I hope that you enjoyed. Okay, first I'm going to begin by the quotation of Somerys Morgan, who is uh, a British novelist. He said that the crown of literature is poetry. It is the end and aim. It is the achievement of beauty and delicacy. The writer of prose can only step aside when the poet passes. Here we can see the, the important rule of, uh, of, liter of uh, poetry. Poetry is the heart of literature. It's the core of literature. We all know that there is no language without literature. There is no literature without poetry. Poetry is the core. Poetry is the heart of literature. William Shakespeare, Emily Dickinson have invited the English literature with wonderful poets. Poetry is the beauty of language. It's the power and the magic of the words. You can find just simple words, but they have a great impact in your heart and in your mind. So teach students that English is not just rule and grammar, okay? It's beauty. They make them taste the beauty of language, of similes and metaphors. Poetry therapy is using poetry for healing, for personal growth. Patient here doesn't take medicine, doesn't take serious drugs. He takes just a pen and paper and come to express himself. This is, you have to encourage your students to express themselves through poetry. This is improve the self-confidence, self-esteem. You will be more self-esteem. This is happening in the classroom, okay, when you encourage them to write their poetry, especially shy students who is going to be more high, more confident, have more high, uh, and, high, and have high, uh, high self-esteem, especially shy students will be encouraged to speak in front of their classmates. So they say goodbye to anxiety and fear. Fall in love. Whenever you write poetry, you fall in love with papers, with pen, with words, with expression. This is empowering your imagination. So using poetry in classroom helps your students to love writing because they can see themselves in the verses and the stanza that they write through poetry. But now we 
all see that poetry is very important to use in classroom. But the question that any teacher might ask is how can I use poetry in class? How can I implement poetry in reading, speaking, listening, writing? And why not in grammar too? <laughs> 10 minutes of poetry. Any teacher can take 10 minutes at the end of the session, okay, to read a poem to his students. You can take, for example, daffodils for William, uh, for William Wordsworth to a high level, and you can just take a simple poem for a beginner student. Make your students familiar with language, with the poetic beauty. Figurative language. What is amazing in poetry is figurative language, which you can the emotion and create mental image. It's a description and feeling to any piece of writing. Assonance, idiom, metaphor, similes. Your students should be familiar with all these terms in order to taste the beauty and to get the message of the poet. Poetry is helping your students to, 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 to improve the analytical skill. How? When students read a poem, he begins not just to look at the literal meaning of the words, he goes to the figurative meaning, okay? And he asks questions, he evaluates, he analyzes why the poet say this, why the poet say this, and he asks reflective questions. It also improves fluency and pronunciation because poetry is not like prose. Poetry, when you read a poem, you read it with different intonations and different pitches. You can hi hire your voice, you raise your voice, you can lower your voice. So poetry helps your students to control their voices and improve the way they speak. Read your poem out loud. Encourage your students to write poems and to read in front of their class. This is improve the self-confidence, the self-esteem, that you will be a good public speaker. But please, don't focus on grammar, on error, because the poets have just wakened within your students. So don't motiv demotivate him or discourage her. Poetry. When you teach grammar, you might use chants, songs, but have you ever used a poem when you teach grammar? Maybe not. So poem is like a song. It has a rhythm. It has repeated syllables. So you can, teach, you can use the teacher's grammar because it is catchy and your students can easily remember it. This is an example of using grammar to teach the part of speech. We have here a noun is the name of anything, hope or swing. Adjectives tell the kind of a noun, as white or brown. How things are done, the adverbs tell. Conjectures don't work to, together. Men and women, winds or weather. When the students read the poem, it will be easily to, to remember. You have read them here. Once the, once the poet with the new students wake, we have to encourage him, we have to motivate him. How? By making competition of poetry and giving prizes to the best poet who writes the best poem. A poem he reads with feeling, because if there is no feeling, there is no poetry. Poetry is feeling and emotions. Technology now have integrated all our life. Okay, including literature, especially poetry. You can find many websites, you can read poems, you can write poems, you can receive feedback from professional poets, from your teacher, from your friends. So encourage your students to go to those read poetry websites. One of the most and we now is poemhunter.com. It's a large community of poets who are passionate and lover of poetry. They, you, you can encourage your students to create their account, okay, and they read poem, and they can receive feedback from professional poets, okay, either teachers or classmates or other uh, poets. The moment of any poet when we feel proud is when he is published, his work is published. So the teacher should publish the work of his students either in school magazine or in a bulletin board like this. This is how encourage students to, to to write more and to be more passionate about. It. Poetry. And here it comes one poem. Poetry is a candle that lights literature. It touches softly my sad heart as the raindrops touch gently the earth. It takes away my pain, anxiety, and sadness as the bright moon takes away the sky darkness. How can you hide this beauty from your students who must be great and creative poets? We get the poets with the new students to take a pen, paper, and write beautiful verses and wonderful rhymes, to write about love, peace, and passion, a moment of romance, mercy, compassion, show them how beautiful poetry is, metaphor, assonance, and similes. Poetry is the beauty of beauties. And thank you. Okay, first of all, good evening, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank you all for being here, teachers and students. 
Uh, actually, my presentation is going to be kind of extension of what we saw this morning with uh, Mr. Hassim about social media. Uh, but however, I'm going to focus on Facebook in particular. Uh, go ahead. Okay, so uh, today's generation of students is actually called to be digital generation. Why? Because simply they are using Web2 tools and they are actually enjoying it. They are advanced in using it. And uh, their, since their appearance, Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, etc., are actually uh, have attracted many users, have attracted many fans, and have uh, actually integrated uh, students into their daily lives and uh, daily practices. So, in uh, my picture picture presentation, I'm going to deal with uh, key points of Facebook. So, first of all, I'm going to start with social network. What do we mean by social network? Essentially, networking is internet-based applications that allow individuals to quickly and easily connect, communicate, and collaborate with each other. That is to say that what makes it unique, actually, is not that it enables you to meet strangers, but it actually enables you to like, create your social uh, work. So Facebook is a particularly social networking service and website that, that is launched in February 2004. It helps you uh, and allows you to create a lonely page to connect with friends family and make new friends with anyone, anywhere. Okay, so Facebook, actually you can just uh, create a page, uh, create a profile, add friends, have like automatic modifications that update you about your profile. In addition to that, of course, you can have like groups, and this is what we're doing as ICT students in, in, in the master program. So it gives people the power to share with others in, that have come goods and common activities. And the importance of using Facebook actually lays in uh, its being as a source of news. That is to say that you don't have to go to Wikipedia anymore. You have everything on Facebook. You don't have to like to search. Uh, you, you, you don't have to call your friends to have about their news. You have everything there on their walls. So teachers also uh, can help keep students engaged. Why? Because simply it's something that we do a lot as students. And of course, everyone has a tendency to love everything that is technological. So we encourage students to share their thoughts. Because we know that it's less stressful than raising hands in the, the, the class, for example. As you can just, uh, for example, uh, comment on Facebook, which is less stressful. So there are some ways of using Facebook in the classroom that are as follow. It can be resources on Facebook. So for example, you can have like attend remote lectures on Facebook. You can also follow politicians, etc. So uh, in addition to that, there are uh, projects and assignments that are put on Facebook or, and you can also share in Facebook like videos, books, etc. that have to do with the classroom. You can also lead collaboration, you can, you can lead discussion that includes not just teachers and students but also the parents, for example, that can participate in the discussion and know about their, uh, their kids and feedback of the teachers. It also facilitates communication how, as I said, by creating groups, by scheduling events like, for example, birthday events and, uh, for example, workshops where and when they are taking place. Uh, in addition to that, you can send messages that can be whether privately or publicly. You can share multimedia like videos, books, and everything that has to do with uh, what you are teaching in the classroom. You can also provide direct communication with instructors. That is to say that, for example, if somebody is behaving or misbehaving in the class, you can just send a message privately in order not to embarrass them in front of others. It also allows shy to show students a way to communicate, and it, it's an inviting atmosphere because simply uh, it's not just uh, as an instructor, but also a platform for students as well. Students are comfortable with Facebook because it is easy and it's not 100% professional. So it's kind of informal, which uh, makes students love such tools. It also promotes collaboration. So by um, like uh, sharing thoughts, sharing ideas in Facebook. Uh, you can also have access to guest speakers. What we mean by that is that, for example, if a teacher had uh, a student who is on his career now, you can like invite him for, for special and particular discussions in the class that might interest students. However, Students, this is also doesn't uh, have uh, advantages, but it also has disadvantages. Like for example, uh, the overuse of Facebook may cause addiction, wasting time if we don't know how to use it in an appropriate way. It also can cause psychological issues, like for example, loneliness, depression, etc. It also uh, has security. We also have security problems that is coming, of course. Uh, this is what happened to me just yesterday when I was like uh, liking a site page that was uh, seemed to be interesting, but it turned to be a virus, and it attacked me and attacked my computer and my friends on Facebook. 
So it also has health problems uh, and social life but face to face interactions are fade away. Facebook tips for teachers can go as follow. Teachers can create a separate account just for their uh, the classes. That is to say that they can have a personal account and a professional account. Uh, they can manage privacy settings, like for example, not allow students to see their photos or, or personal stuff. They can stay active by posting uh, all the time, by like updating so that the student can feel the engagement of the teacher in, in Facebook. So we can also get over the term friend and make it uh, professional instead of just focusing on being friend on Facebook. So uh, there are some facts that we may ignore about Facebook. Facebook has over 100 million users. And we know that Facebook is a social network, but his creator actually, his ability is to fire people. So Facebook engineers originally wanted to call the like button, the awesome button, and the average person has 100, 120 uh, friends. So uh, sometimes you don't know who is who on Facebook, which is obvious. We, we don't really know uh, who is who on Facebook, like fake profiles. And this is actually maybe encountered by adolescents more than adults. So, they need to be uh, careful while dealing with Facebook. Um, so yeah, it's like a gel. You sit around, you waste time, and you just get poked by guys you don't even know. When we have nothing to do, we don't have Facebook. Let us say that when you get bored, you, you just uh, enjoy being bored on Facebook, not somewhere else. But, but actually, I disagree with this idea somehow. I can say that uh, when you have lots to do, you can do it on Facebook as well, as we're doing as ICD students who are benefiting a lot from Facebook. In addition to that, it keeps you away from studies sometimes if you don't use it in a wise way. So, yeah, it does sometimes, but it actually depends on the person, on his perception towards Facebook and the way he's using Facebook uh, in an appropriate and a wise way. So, yeah, you put your face in the book instead of Facebook in all the time and go on the pages <laughs> after it. So, before going deeper into discussing the importance of ICT in our education, I would like first to ask this question, why ICT is important to improve our educational system? So, uh, in fact, there are many answers to this question. One of the answers is that ICT provides us with opportunity. Now, uh, opportunities are, are there, so we just need to, to, to take them. So, uh, opportunity we mean that uh, as de with developing countries, we uh, uh, Sorry, uh, ICT provides us uh, with unprecedented opportunities to to improve our educational system. And at Morocco, as a developing country, we need to take chance uh, we need to seize this opportunity and to take this chance. And uh, uh, our educational, uh, the Ministry of Education seems to be fully aware of this. And that we saw, we see here the National Charter of Education and Training of 1999. If we look at the uh, Article 10, 10 in this charter we find that there is a stress on the, uh, on, the, on the importance of ICT in improving our uh, educational system. And as a enforcement to the Charter of 1999, uh, we, ha we have also the Emergency Plan, EEP, or Education Emergency Plan, which started in 2009, which also, uh, uh, which also assesses and emphasizes on the importance of technology as a founding pillar to improve and enhance our educational system. So these two reforms come up with different initiatives and programs and projects to improve and to equip schools and universities with ICT equipment, such as Gini Program 2005. This program, the government spent more than $11 million in this program, uh, uh, in which, uh, uh, and also in addition to this, we have the program of uh, Foundation Mohammed VI. And uh, NAFIDA uh, encourages teachers to use uh, ICT in their teaching uh, by providing them with, with technologies, with, with, with adhesive connections and uh, computers. In addition, in addition to these programs, we have also. Uh, uh, I have also another, another project which was launched by the Ministry of Education, uh, in, uh, which is Alka TV Centre Morocco, 2009. So uh, the, it is a collaboration between the, the Ministry of Education and the company of Alka TV, which uh, 
uh, the, uh, in, in which they agree you know, on providing uh, uh, schools and ICT and uh, universities with, with the ICT equipment and also to generalize uh, the, uh, the, the multimedia classrooms in the public sector. Uh, in just program as well, which started in 2010, and it is uh, we all know this program, which encourages also uh, students to uh, to use uh, technology in their learning. By here, the, the, the government afford 85 percent of the cost of, the, of of laptops and internet connection, and the students only uh, uh, buy in, only afford uh, 25 percent. Of the cost of the of the laptop, we have also made uh, association, uh, made association also uh, encourage teachers to uh, to improve their teaching, and we all know the the the, the conference that was held in Agadir in 2011, which was about ICT in ELT. Uh, in addition to made association, we have also different programs such uh, we have all, all the government also afford training for teachers we have here from the, the 2004 2007 we have the more than 120,000 uh, teachers who were trained to uh, improve or to, to use ICT for pedagogical purposes and this is a, a survey which was done by uh, by uh, handy in 2007 survey in uh, ICT in education. <coughs> so, uh, having said all these uh, projects and, and programs, still we are still at the beginning of the road. Still much work needs to, need, much work needs to be done, either from, the, from uh, the part of the Ministry of Education or from the part of teachers themselves or, and civil society as well. So, uh, uh, despite the fact of these all programs, uh, many, many, many problems. We are still facing many problems. And this, uh, these problems can be uh, can be divided into three parts: the lack of training. Though I have mentioned earlier that 120,000 teachers were trained, but comparing it to the to the number of teachers uh, existing in Morocco, so it's still the number is still weak. Also, lack of facilities. Also, uh, ICT. Uh, no one can deny the fact that, that uh, our schools uh, uh, need the basic facilities, if not uh, 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 ICT equipment. Also, sometimes we don't find the problem with the equipment or with the with the ministry, but we find that the teachers themselves uh, refuse to take the chance to make, to, to, to to change the way of teaching. Uh, uh, because either because they are demotivated or because they opt for more traditional uh, tools for teaching. And this is the end of my picture of Chapter. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am Mohamed Akalush. I'm presenting this picture on behalf of myself alone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this picture uh, is going to be about uh, a web tool which is uh, very interesting and I think it's going to be very useful for either teachers and also students. Its name is, uh, its name is uh, Stixi. Uh, uh, in your professional life, in your uh, school, if you are a student, or in your personal life, that sometimes you just forget uh, that uh, certain things which are very important, okay? So we are rushing all the time as we are too busy organizing all the different things which you have to do in all the different areas in which you uh, uh, in which you are uh, you are part of either your family, your school, or your work. So uh, there should be a solution simply, and I think that this is a very good solution for to save the uh, to solve this problem, uh, which is uh, Stixi. Uh, and as we are going to see, it helps a lot in reminding you of all the tasks which you will have uh, to do. Uh, this is the first page of Stixi. As you see, it is a very uh, welcoming page. And uh, you just sign up or sign in if you already have an account. To sign up, you all what you need is your email account, a valid one of course, and a password. This is all you need. It's a very, uh, and I think that nobody 
there is nobody who doesn't have an email, so it's going to be very helpful. This is the first page. In this first page, as you see, you have a lot of things which you can add. You can add a to-do note, you can add uh, a sticky note, you can add pictures, and you can also add documents. <laughs> and all this in only one page. Okay. So this is an edited work. This work is already complete. Where you can see a picture, you can see here certain sticky notes with different colors according to your choice. You have here a to-do uh, note, and you also have some uh, other uh, files. Uh, this is a calendar. The importance of this calendar is that you click on it and it opens. You choose the date which uh, you want and you, uh, you uh, write the note which you want to remember. And at that date or before, if you choose that uh, to remind you 24 hours before, it just reminds you. Okay? Uh, these are some of the options which you can have. What is really important about this Dixiebot is that it can be shared with other people. Which means that if you are a teacher, you can share it with your students and they can simply log in and uh, have a look at it without, without being enrolled into CC. If you choose to only for a certain group of people to see it, you just put a password which you give to these people and only the people who have the password can access uh, to it. And these are some personal settings which you can, uh, you, you can fill with your, uh, all your information about uh, yourself and how your, uh, your sticky board, uh, you want your sticky board to be. Okay? This is a detailed view of the different sticky board which you can have. Which means that you don't have, uh, uh, in this 60 board, you don't need to have only one board, you can have many boards. For example, you have many levels, as a teacher, you can have one board for each different level, okay? And uh, uh, this is how uh, to uh, add other boards. Here you, uh, you have a new 60 board, and when you click on it, to choose, you uh, insert all the information about that board, and then it appears on the left uh, margin. And here, as you see, there are three 60 boards, my first one, my second one, and my third one. And then you click on the one you want and start editing as you wish. This is to share. You can share it with other people, with your students. There are two options to share. Either you share with nobody editing it, or you share with those people who log in and they, uh, they can have the ability to start editing, which means to add notes or delete ones. And of course, you can, uh, you can uh, receive notifications from your six board on your email, either remembering you of the uh, uh, different tasks which you are, you are going to do, or uh, any, uh, if there is any edited uh, new 60 notes by another person, it uh, simply uh, notifies you in your email, okay? And this is the guest view in which, uh, uh, as you see in this view, uh, there is not the possibility to edit. Otherwise, you, you would have uh, in the lower margin, place where you can add sticky words or delete them. And this is how the, the guest uh, view is it. I think this is a very good solution if you have a lot of things to do and you are afraid that something might, uh, you might miss one of the tasks to do. Uh, this is one web to tool which you can use. It. And uh, this is it. I'm speaking on my, uh, I mean, the two of us, Mr. Aziz Drush, and I, Yostaya, going to present, as I said, the history of technology in education. Just for the picot temperature, please. It's okay. It's wait. Okay, cave drawings. The first thing that people used, to, like the way they, they were learning, and it was by seeing. And the only thing that they can transmit message with is to draw things. So the first thing they came up with is to draw things on walls so others they can see it and start to make a kind of literary things. Then we go to the 510 before Christmas with the Pythagoras schools. They started to have kind of logical concepts. We did, they, they, they built houses, those great houses that you see in the Greek mythology, uh, Greek uh, countries. Then uh, the paper was made in China, so the paper was used uh, in China in uh, 105 years after the Christmas. <coughs> I'm just giving you the information about the process.
manuscript, uh, manuscript tra transcription. The first, uh, it, it came with the Greek and the, uh, the Roman. They started writing. So once knowledge is becoming stored in a, a kind of writing way. So it, it is shared, but the, the people with whom it is shared, are, they are limited. Thus, Gutenberg had something which is useful, which is the printing press. So everyone can share the knowledge, they can share the knowledge at the biggest level. After that, yeah. after Gutenberg, in fact, <laughs> public education appeared at 1500 years. Public education, the first time there is a person who is talking. But the problem was that the, 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 the learning that was taking place it was a teacher-centered thing. So then the blackboard appeared. The blackboard. Yeah, the blackboard and the model, uh, let's say, board state. Uh, uh, it, it appears, so the, it, it was uh, the first kind of interaction that happened between the teacher and their students. When they ask questions, their students would, would answer. And it's, we see how these things in our society, not just in Morocco, but everywhere else. Then the teacher book appeared in, I think it's, 1600 years, the first, the first time in which uh, the teacher's book were used to, kind of, to have a kind of process to guide the teacher's teaching process. After that, in public education, uh, audiovisual age, 1920, the radio appeared. Its uses were to, gain, to get information and to listen to the people. For example, it's thinking of ALT. Well, I'm not saying that ALT was. It was, but it was not like common. The radio was, or was used to have the learners listen to the target language students. Then the T, the audiovisual aid, uh, 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 the film strip projector. I'm talking about the data show. It's a kind of a data show. It was used to show pictures for the students to kind of to help them connect what they are learning with what what they are seeing. The audio, at the audiovisual aid as well, the overhead projector, the one we use in science. If you see uh, in the science courses, you see the teacher, he is drawing something, and at the same time, it is being projected, uh, seen for the, uh, by the whole, by every, all the students. Okay. Information age. At this age, everything was uh, based on information. Let's say, commercial, commercial uh, the world war was uh, based on its own, like, Everything on co being com com uh, commercial, let's say. Information. Information. Okay. <laughs> the television. The television appeared, program, TV shows, they were based on the information. The BCD and the PCR, the, they were kind of videos, of, of, uh, like recorded videos, so in which the information is stored to be used by the teacher, by the, by the, stu by the students, and the teacher as well to, for any recommendation for the students. Again, something else. The cassette or the tape. Oh, it was uh, kind of, I think it's the same. Record the information, audio information, and that's it. That was in 1980. Computer age, I guess. Computer age. The first time people knew what is computers, and it became used in, in, uh, in, the, in, the, teacher, in the class in the classrooms where teacher was more e like explaining lessons and the student can follow them through a machine called computer. With this machine, students were able to connect with other teachers in other places around the world. Then in 1991, the, the interactive board appeared. It is a kind of, it, it is related uh, in two computers. While a student is writing something on the, on the board, it can speak and it can have like, Give something. Let's say give the, the the student the impression that they are learning something and giving feedback at the same time. The, digi the digital age. Everything is on PDF and the PDF. On, everything is virtual and it can be shared in an easy way. That's the most important thing about the digital age. And it is related to computer age as well. Interactive age. iPad, iPod, any uh, uh, some sort. Uh, Anything, iPhone, everything that it has, that it depends on the user activity to interact. Then, 
I think, for more information, ask what's the end. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Suspense. <laughs> First of all, I congratulate everyone, every one of you. You have done a great job, all of you, without exception. The way that you present, the way that you master the language, the technology, PowerPoint, and the harmony with the speech, and also the mastery of the content. And um, this is not the end of it, because we have recorded all the videos, so it will be very helpful to others to know about the content. Yeah, presented a nice, nice to software. To help themselves again. Yeah, see what and you will done. see yourselves, of course, and you see how you can develop uh, even uh, more. Uh, in fact, you have gone beyond our expectations. In a very short time, you managed to present very uh, well-prepared pizza coaches, and, and we are all happy that we are having the first pizza coach in Morocco, <laughs> possibly in North Africa. <laughs> we'll, we, we will search on the net and see whether Pichakush have been uh, presented somewhere else in North Africa or even in Africa. Uh, so we are celebrating a very uh, nice product, nice presentations. And the results, by the way, are arbitrary. Don't take them for a, a, a judgment of your competencies. You have done all well. This yeah. is just for classifying, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, we have to select some. We have to select somebody <laughs> to be the first and somebody to be the second yeah. and so on. We try to be objective, but, but you cannot be objective 100%. Yeah. Um, Richard is going to give the results. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I, I would like to add my, as I said, America two cents to this. Better you than me. That was difficult to do under the speed of having these changing slides. It's a very challenging thing. And I learned a good bit. I learned it's better to be a judge than a participant sometimes, but that was, that was very impressive. And um, the fact that you all got up here and were able to overcome whatever anxiety you had is a victory right away. And I do encourage you to look at that video. Uh, you will see things that you'll be surprised how good you are. You might think that I was terrible, <laughs> but everyone was really very good. You're right. Um, and of course, at the same time, everyone can find a way, oh, I should have done this and that. And that is that constant development that we've been talking about all day, really. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> no. Okay. In our third place, we'll have a countdown, is Mohammed Akalush. For our second place, Sophia. And can anyone do a drum roll? Yes. <laughs> is Rama. Yeah. I think we have to give, we have to give everyone here a round of applause. I want to. I want to congratulate all. Of you. Yeah, that's it. Uh, just uh, final words to thank uh, you uh, for having worked so hard and uh, done you really, I felt it's your best to come up with a good Picha Kucha presentation, it's, which is a good thing. Uh, if you people want to succeed, they need to make an investment of the heart as well in whatever thing they do, not simply just two things and then. There should be an investment of the heart. And that's how things can be successful. 
So thank you for having uh, done that and uh, wish you all the best. And also would like to thank uh, Richard for having uh, accepted to present today for us in the morning. And also to be a member of the judge and to uh, help animate this uh, study day conference. Uh, big thanks to Sihasim and Sizubair, Morsinat, Maid, uh, Academy, the three of them, uh, for having uh, enriched the experience of the program and uh, helping it uh, boost and uh, flourish and also help you particularly learn more about the field. Uh, that's it. Thank you yeah, very one, much. One last yeah. thing is that we are going to have a group photo. Yes. Outside. 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 Okay. Outside. Okay. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.